Thanks, Daniele. Uh, also, it's nice not to self-introduce myself uh, again. So we stay with the open data, uh, but not from the public sector anymore. So here, the idea is to provide you um, with a comparison of some pan-European open building footprints uh, with an analysis in some EU countries. So what is the context here? Um, you know very well that building footprints, which from now on I will just call buildings, are of course key data sets for several applications from disaster management, response, uh, urban planning, uh, um, energy related applications, demographic studies, etc. Historically, they have been always produced, updated, curated by the public sector, right? National mapping agencies, cadastral agencies. But today, mainly thanks to the technological advancements, there are other players that can be valuable producers of such data sets as well. And I'm speaking about the public sector, sorry, the private sector, research or academia, and also crowdsourcing or citizen-generated data initiatives. Some examples here, so from crowdsourcing initiatives, you all know OpenStreetMap, Private initiatives, we have Microsoft, we have Google actually producing their own open building data set, and we have the Overture Maps Foundation. For those of you who are not familiar, this is a foundation established at the end of 2022 by four companies, uh, Microsoft, uh, Meta, Amazon, and TomTom, with the promise to produce um, global data sets, open data sets, quality data sets, actually, um, for um, a range of applications. But also we have Academia, and uh, two products here, Iobucco and the Digital Building Stock Model, which I will cover a bit uh, later on. So what did we do with this, within this context? So the idea was to focus on some of these building data sets for, again, open data from non-governmental organizations, we focused on the European Union, and we downloaded them in January uh, this year. The objective was to assess how similar or how different they are, only in terms of geometry, so far so we didn't look at the attributes. We did that in a limited number five uh, of EU countries, and we also considered not just the countries as a whole, but also the degrees of urbanization to see whether things are different in urban areas or in rural areas. Which are these four data sets? So the first is OpenStreetMap. Again, I think no need to talk much about that. It's a crowdsourcing project started in 2004, currently more than 2 million contributors. The whole database is available under ODBL. Buildings typically come from the digitization of satellite imagery, sometimes also from imports from third party um, uh, organizations and data sets with a license compatible with the ODBL. It's a global database, of course, updated on a continuous basis. So we use GeoFabric to extract the buildings using the building key. Iobuco is uh, a data set produced by a research team in Berlin, the Mercato Research Institute on Global Commons and Climate Change and the Technical University Berlin. It's mostly uh, ODBL license. There are a couple of exceptions for two areas in Italy and the Czech Republic. Um, how is this produced? Um, so they basically use the governmental data for countries where they found open governmental data. So this is, again, government. For the countries where they didn't find um, governmental data, they just use OpenStreetMap. That's important to remember in the following. The coverage is the EU plus Switzerland. And this was released in 2022, also important to remember for the following. Then we use Microsoft, Global ML Building Footprints. I will call it Microsoft from now on. Of course, this is a private initiative, open data under ODBL. In this case, the buildings were derived from machine learning methods on Bing Maps uh, high-resolution imagery. It's a global data set, regularly updated. On the GitHub repository, you find all the uh, releases. There are very frequent releases done by Microsoft. Final product is the Digital Building Stock Model, or DBSM. So this is produced by some colleagues of mine at the GRC, mainly for energy-related purposes. It's, again, licensed under the ODBL. The production process is still different, so it's a hierarchical conflation. They started from OpenStreetMap, then they also used an added Microsoft, so where OpenStreetMap is not available, they also looked at Microsoft, and then they also looked at the vectorized version of the European Settlement Map, which is a binary map with information on built, non-built areas, basically. Available for the EU and released in 2023. They are planning also a second release to happen soon. As I said, we also looked at the degree of urbanization, looking at the NATS uh, classification. NATS is the nomenclature for 
territorial units for statistics. In Europe, you may be familiar, we looked at the NATS three areas, so the smallest administrative areas, roughly corresponding to municipalities or counties with a population of 150, 800 inhabitants. And these are classified into three classes, urban, semi-urban, and rural. Five countries, I said before, uh, Belgium, Denmark, Greece, Malta, and Sweden. Why those countries? Well, we wanted to choose countries in a way that, first of all, we could have countries of different sides, geographically far away from each other, to make sure that their open street map communities were different and not really influencing each other. Um, the need to have also different fractions of uh, urban, semi-urban, and rural areas. You see the colors in the maps. And also the need to have Iobuco coming from different sources. I said before, for some countries, in this case, Belgium, Denmark, and Malta, Iobuco makes use of governmental data. For some other countries, Greece and Sweden, it's OpenStreetMap. Now, what did we do? First, we looked at the data sets, and we calculated the total number of buildings and the total area of buildings for each of the data sets in each of the countries. And we also plotted those two variables in a B-dimensional uh, plot. Let's have a look at what this actually tells us, starting from Iubuco. So if we look at the countries where Iubuco is based on governmental data, you see that very clearly Iubuco stands on the top uh, right. So the, it's the data set with the highest number of buildings and uh, highest total area of buildings. But if you look at the data sets where Iubuco comes from OpenStreetMap, it's in the other side. So the, it's the data set with less buildings and the lowest uh, total area. Looking at Microsoft, uh, again, here, this is more heterogeneous, so sometimes uh, look at uh, um, Greece, Sweden, and Malta. It looks quite good in terms of the total number of buildings, so quite complete. Um, in some other cases, it's more, let's say, uh, shifted to the left, so basically few buildings. Uh, you see for Denmark, it's the data set with the lowest number of buildings. Um, in terms of the area, area looks one of the highest uh, areas in general. OpenStreetMap, um, again, you see OpenStreetMap typically is not the data set with, uh, um, let's say, the, the, the highest number of buildings and the highest total area. But you can already see that, for example, in Denmark, OpenStreetMap looks quite good in terms of at least the total area. Um, we can already see that in Denmark, for example, also in Belgium, the OpenStreetMap communities are quite active. This is not the case for um, Malta and for Greece, where you see very clearly OpenStreetMap is really at the, at the bottom left uh, here. If we look at the comparison between OpenStreetMap and Yubuko, again, for the countries where Yubuko is based on governmental data, we clearly see that OpenStreetMap is much, let's say, uh, less complete than Yubuko, clearly. If we look at the other data sets, again, uh, OpenStreetMap is a bit better than Yubuko. Why? Because Yubuko is using OpenStreetMap, but from 2021, 22, when they released the data set. And of course, OpenStreetMap has improved um, in the meantime. OpenStreetMap against Microsoft is quite interesting because in some cases, look at Greece and uh, look at Sweden also and Malta, when the OpenStreetMap community is probably not super active, Microsoft is really much more complete, at least looks much more complete in terms of total area, total number of buildings. In other cases, the situation is opposite. Look at Denmark, where OpenStreetMap is more complete in terms of total area, both total area and total number of buildings. Belgium is a bit strange because OpenStreetMap has more buildings but a lower uh, total area. Of course, it also depends how buildings are mapped. You, you may have one you know, in one data set, uh, let's say a set of adjacent buildings mapped as just one building, and in another data set, the very same, um, let's say, group of buildings mapped as the single buildings. So you need to take all of these things into account. Finally, the um, DBSM, the Digital Building Stock Model, usually is one of the data set with the highest uh, area of buildings. And this comes from this, conf let's say, hierarchical conflation approach, where they consider multiple data sets together. Now, after that, we wanted to really look at the similarity between the data sets. We started by deriving this table, where basically um, you see percentages. So each number is the percentage of the area of the data set you see in the column, represented by the area of intersection between the four data sets. What does it mean? Basically, if the percentage is high, it means that that data set in that country is very similar to the other three data sets. If it is 
a low percentage, it is actually very dissimilar compared to the other data sets. So we can look at this um, table from the country perspective. You see that in Belgium and Denmark, uh, data sets look quite similar. Numbers, percentages between 60, 70 percent, 80 percent. Sweden, a bit lower numbers. Greece and Malta, the lowest numbers. Let's try to understand why. So Microsoft and the DBSM are those where we actually see the lowest number, especially for Greece and Malta. These are due to different things, but mainly the fact that OpenStreetMap is less developed, less complete, as we also saw before in Greece um, and Malta. If we look at also Iubuco and OpenStreetMap, Iubuco in Malta stands as a very low number because in Malta, Iubuco is based on governmental data, but when we compare it with other data sets like OpenStreetMap that is, as I said, very poorly complete, then of course we get this very low value of, of intersection. If we do the same only for considering only rural areas and only urban areas and semi-urban areas, this is not in the table, we get a um, very clear indication that in rural areas the data sets are even more diverse. Okay, the minimum percentage would become 7%. The higher uh, percentage for urban areas becomes uh, 79%, which says that, again, in urban areas, the data set are more similar. This also somehow confirms the literature on OpenStreetMap itself, uh, that basically tells us that in urban areas, there are usually OpenStreetMap is more complete, because there are more people living there, more mappers actually interested to map things there, etc. Then we also computed the same, but for each couple of uh, building data sets, and we created this table. Again, in this table for each country, each number is the percentage of the area of the data set in the row that is represented by the area of intersection between the data set in the row and the data set in the column. So very same story as before, but applied to each couple of data sets. Again, I will guide you through the interpretation of this table. Let's look at the three countries where Yubuko is based on governmental data, and again compare OpenStreetMap and Yubuko. You see that, basically, if you look at the OpenStreetMap rows, the numbers are quite high. If you look at the Yubuko rows, the numbers are high, with the exception of Malta, where we get these 20 seven percent, which again derives from the fact that in Malta the development, the completeness of OpenStreetMap is not very high, so we get this huge difference between the two data sets. Yubuko against uh, Microsoft and uh, the DBSM. The numbers are pretty high here, lower than OpenStreetMap. Again, in Malta, Microsoft uh, shows the lowest value. Yubuko against OpenStreetMap, but in the other countries where Yubuko is based on OpenStreetMap. Here, we have this 99% and 97% when comparing the intersection to Yubuko, which is expected because can, it, it, it would have been 100% if we considered OpenStreetMap two years ago, but now OpenStreetMap, as we said, has evolved, so we get slightly less than 100%. Uh, OpenStreetMap versus Microsoft, this is very interesting comparison because uh, they are the basic building blocks to derive also the other data sets, right? Numbers are pretty heterogeneous here. I just want to point you to this 24 and 25 percent again in Greece and Malta, due to, again, the poor completeness of OpenStreetMap. But also Sweden is an interesting case because both numbers are close to 50 percent, which basically tells us that both data sets have roughly half of the area of their buildings that do not actually intersect with the area of the buildings of the other data sets, so in both senses, which is pretty strange as a thing, actually. Again, if we extended that to urban areas and uh, rural areas, we would see basically the same story. So the um, similarity increases in urban areas. This is just two numbers for, for Denmark, um, and it decreases in, uh, in rural areas. Again, for several reasons, uh, OpenStreetMap we know. For the other data sets, could be a consequence of OpenStreetMap, could be also related to the fact that Microsoft algorithms might work less well in rural areas, or you know, different reasons still to be, of course, understood. The code we used is, is Python code, is, is on GitHub. Uh, we parallelize part of the process to increase efficiency. We provide Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, the license is the European Union uh, public license, which is fully 
open source. So feel free to take a look and of course provide comments, reuse, uh, etc. Some conclusions here. So I showed you a lot of numbers, but what can we, uh, let's say, conclude about all of that? So that was, first of all, the first, at least to our knowledge, comparison of some of the available non-governmental um, building data sets. Um, I want to stress the fact that we didn't do a quality assessment. I never said this data set is better than this other. I mean, could be better, but uh, relatively to a specific region or, or, or context, let's say. So what we like to use is the term comparison. So we evaluate really the similarity, the difference. Let's always take in mind that these data sets derive from different sources. Again, private sector, the research sector, crowdsourcing, and they derive from very different, completely different uh, processes. I would say also the purpose of the production of the data sets themselves is very different. And also let's take into account that there are variations not only between countries, but also within countries. These are just two examples, both uh, coming from Malta. So on the left, uh, this is Microsoft uh, uh, against OpenStreetMap. So you see on the left, uh, a case where we could say that both data sets are actually, so the buildings of both data sets should correspond to the same real world buildings. Most probably they derive from the use of different satellite uh, imagery. The result is that if you think to what we did before, we calculated the intersection, which is the portion that is colored, and we calculated the fraction of the area of each of the two represented by the intersection. So you see the intersection here is a small portion of the area of any of those. Different is the case on the right, where in OpenStreetMap we only have one big polygon, as if it was a single building. Of course, this is not corresponding to the reality. In Microsoft, we have all the buildings, so the intersection here is almost equal to the Microsoft uh, area. So different cases, even you know, in the same country, and Malta is a very small country. So what can we say at the end? We can provide some recommendations on, uh, um, to users that would like to actually use one of those data sets. So for OpenStreetMap, uh, we showed um, that the quality very much depends on the actual presence of a community there. Imports, of course, if there have been imports from governmental data set, the quality is usually better. The completeness also confirming the literature increases when moving from rural areas to urban areas and uh, using the latest version of OpenStreetMap is always recommended. So if you have uh, in your local file system an OpenStreetMap database of uh, some months or some years ago, and you need to use it, don't, don't use it, download the latest version. Iubuco, so when based on governmental data set, is of course a reliable uh, data set, but it may be outdated. Consider Iubuco was pr released in 2022. So the governmental data set pres present in Iubuco might have even be released before that year. So, you know, good data, of course, because it's, it's uh, authoritative data, but might be outdated. When Iubuco uses OSM, we have seen that OSM of course, changes uh, continuously, this is not captured. Microsoft is the data set showing really the most heterogeneous results. It looks like a complete data set, if you uh, remember the initial graphs, because the number of buildings, the total error are usually among the uh, highest ones, but we found a lot of uh, very low percentages when looking at the accuracy, when looking at the, at the um, at the comparison between the couple of data sets. So positional accuracy might be questionable. Of course, additional work would be needed to uh, better understand that. DBSM is a nice approach because they combine different data sets in order to somehow, well, and this somehow overcomes the limitations of each of those data sets. And this is actually good to maximize completeness. So if you need, if you have an application requiring a high level of completeness, like disaster response, for example, you want to know where buildings are, where people are, this might be a, a good data set uh, to use. Final point on the future work. We would like first to extend the study uh, to validate what we have found, although I'm pretty sure that we even if we only looked at five countries, we captured already some trends and patterns that we may even found if we extend the area, for example, to the whole uh, European Union. We can, of course, plug in new data sets like uh, Google, although Google is not available in Europe, and over to our maps uh, data. We can even extend the work to attributes in principle. We didn't consider attributes, as I said, so that would need to be done from scratch. Of course, if anyone is interested, let's, let's talk. And, uh, Last but not least, the complement uh, 
what I showed you with a qualitative analysis of the data set. What do I mean? I mean, I showed you a lot of numbers, intersection, geometries, but uh, what is behind those data sets? So what are the licensing conditions? I briefly mentioned at the beginning. Accessibility, so is it something uh, easy to download, easy to access? What is the encoding? Uh, are there APIs available? Um, are there quality assurance, quality control mechanisms for the production of the data set? Uh, what is the granularity? What is the scale? What is the coverage? I mentioned about the coverage. Final point on the governance. So what is behind? Um, who takes decisions on what is included and not in the data sets? Is it just one company? Is it a community, like in the case of OpenStreetMap? And what is the sustainability of the project? Some projects uh, already ensure that they will stay there for years. Um, some others, uh, uh, this is in, for some others, this is questionable, like the EU Bucco that was released in 2022. It's a small research team at the university. Is this sustainable? So all those questions are equally important to really better understand this landscape. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco, for your presentation. Very nice. Um, any question for Marco? Thank you very much, Marco. I think that's, uh, for us also as practitioners, really interesting to have this sort of overview of those building footprint data sets. Some are much more pushed popularity in, in Twitter and other social media, but it's good to know also other ones. And uh, it's a curious uh, comparison in, uh, for, for, um, in, in Europe, this type of thing. Is there, for us now maybe, if we want to do analysis or, or services around buildings and building footprints, I don't know, heat islands in cities, you know, those, those type of applications, what would you recommend us to use? I, I missed which application? No, different application. Like for example, heat islands. Heat islands. Heat right. islands or, or, I don't know, wind corridors or, you know, those type of things. Um, uh, which, which data sets in Europe would you recommend us to use? Well, that's exactly the, the most challenging point, that it's not possible to tell you for this application use that data set. You, you may coming back to this uh, slide, you may understand, uh, and this is what we try to provide here, the pros and cons of each data set, but then I think it's up to the user, knowing that, knowing the specific application, to have a look at the data sets. So for example, if it's a urban application, I would say OpenStreetMap usually works well in urban areas, for example. If it is a rural application or a countrywide, well, let's take a look at, for example, how active is the OpenStreetMap community. There are uh, tools, automated tools available to just check how many users are active on a daily basis. Um, so, you know, this is, I think, the, 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 the main conclusion of the study, that it's not possible to tell which data set is better to do what, but it really depends on uh, use case, application, the specific context. I have a great presentation. Uh, one question from my side regarding the governmental data. So is uh, your book already considering cadastral data from every country, or cadastral data is a separate data set? Because if it's not considered here, I think that will be a really good source, and the one also you can compare the results from all the sources. Well, so uh, as far as I know, uh, the researchers in uh, for Ubuco they looked at uh, open data portals. So they really went uh, to the national level for each uh, EU country, and they uh, accessed and used that data set whenever they found it and uh, as open data. So that could be national mapping agencies, even cadastral data, I guess, for some country. But if you check the metadata for each country on the Ubuco website, you will find all the details. And the download happens country by country. So you can uh, easily check uh, uh, all the metadata and where each data set uh, comes from. Again, it's governmental data, but it's data from 2022 or even earlier times. Uh, I mean, if you find in your book, it, it's there. The provenance, look at the, the provenance is government. Uh, not sure, could be cadastral data, could be national mapping agency. You need to check on a country by country basis. Thank you. I don't know if this is a question or a co more of a comment, but uh, one thing that I know about governmental data sets is that uh, in those, not everything that might look like a building to an AI is actually defined to be a building. Like, for example, in the Finnish uh, building data set, which I happen to know, there are buildings and then there are constructions. 
So might this perhaps be one of the reasons why the Microsoft data set had so many buildings because it, uh, it was uh, made by algorithms, right? Yeah. So it might have like uh, categorized things that are not officially buildings as buildings. No, 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 absolutely, absolutely. We didn't do this, uh, um, let's say, semantical mapping between what is a building in each of the data sets. Microsoft uh, derives from uh, machine learning, so I think this is pretty straightforward. They just map as building whatever they, uh, the algorithm says it's a building. So it could be not only construction uh, works, uh, but even something that is not a construction at all, that uh, you know the algorithm uh, uh, interprets as, as a building, absolutely. The same is for OpenStreetMap. Something may be mapped as a building, while in reality it's not building at all. So absolutely, these are all things to be taken into account when looking at, at, the, at the numbers. I think we still get uh, an idea of the main trends and patterns and how they compare with each other. They are all released as building data sets. Uh, so that's why we just took what uh, is there and make a comparison. But these points are totally valid. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, was was sure no no as I said we we had to start from somewhere and we just started from the easiest thing that is just to compare John no 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 wait but these are building data sets so we are did not take data sets, we took building data sets, then what each considers as a building or what is, uh, whether any polygon is or not a building, then we didn't, of course, look at each single polygon, but these are building data sets, so they are released as buildings. So we assume that they actually represent buildings. As we just commented, this might not be the case in the real world when we go and we say, okay, this OpenStreetMap building is actually something else that uh, the, 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 the mapper actually saw as a building, interpreted as a building. Same is for machine learning. So the reason not to look at attributes was just to do the first uh, uh, let's say level analysis, looking at attributes that would be much more complex so if we want to map. Of course, didn't say that, but some of those data sets include the important information like the classification of the building, number of floors, uh, um, the, 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 the age of a building, some others do not. That is also an important element to take into account for uh, the use case and the application, of course. Consider this just as a very first uh, uh, analysis, only limited to the geometry, which already tells a lot, I, I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. A very good uh, approach. Um, I, uh, I want to ask about the uh, possibility to uh, compare uh, no uh, one sort with other. Uh, maybe with uh, in situ data. I know that is difficult because uh, you can go from different uh, countries to, to measure the, the, the building, but maybe uh, combine some uh, uh, digital twins or beams model uh, with uh, this out to, comp to compare the uh, areas that uh, with uh, one uh, building that you know that is topographic uh, uh, well uh, uh, levanted to, to, to compare with this source. Maybe it's a good uh, approach. I so, if I understand correctly, you are speaking about validation somehow. Yes, of... validation with some building that you know that are good uh, area, which sure. are, come from digital twins or from beans. No, no, absolutely. Another way could be to just have a look at some recent satellite imagery, maybe more than one, and just pick up something that we know very clearly from imagery that is a building. Yeah. I mean, that, that is, of course, uh, would be very useful for, uh, let's say, manual validation of the results. But, of course, it's very difficult to scale. Um, yes, maybe in Czech project, we uh, will provide some digital twin from Lisboa. So maybe this is a good approach. Yeah, but it, yeah. looking for something like that. To yeah, compare. I mean this is, is somehow also the approach that was done at the very beginning of the literature work to assess the quality of OpenStreetMap. So they took the governmental data to taken as the ground truth to measure the quality of OpenStreetMap. So where there was uh, authoritative data, then this was the ground truth. It works, yes, but. Uh, again, authoritative data may not be fully updated. So once again, there is a new building built uh, uh, today. 
it's in OpenStreetMap tomorrow, but it will be in the governmental database in three years, maybe. So that's always the kind of thing for which, uh, um, you know, I think the approach is uh, based on the so-called um, extrinsic uh, quality assessment. So we take something, the governmental data as the ground truth, work, but until a certain point, in, in my opinion. There is a lot of literature on that. We can discuss later. I've done a lot of research on that in the, in the past. Sometimes comparing the data sets uh, instead of just assessing the quality of something, taking something else as a reference is also maybe the, the best approach. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.